It was always going to be difficult to make a follow-up to Pac-Man Championship Edition DX, a game which in my opinion is not only arguably one of the best games of the last generation, but also quite possibly the best modern reinvention of a classic gaming icon. Whilst its recently released numbered sequel still proves to be a highly addictive and enjoyable affair, unfortunately it loses a lot of what made the previous instalment such a perfect puzzler. The first Championship Edition and its fantastic sequel DX successfully managed to revamp a classic game that I was never particularly fond of. Despite not being a massive fan of the original Pac-Man, I'm not ignorant to the fact that it was a smash hit. Its release had a huge effect on the gaming scene around the world, and mechanically I think the game is perfect, on equal terms with the legendary Tetris in fact. In spite of all this, the truth is I've never really cared for Pac-Man due to the simple fact that I'm just not very good at it. Sure, I can make it to the third or fourth maze, but that's about it. It's a game that despite me playing it sporadically over the last decade, has never really clicked with me in a way that it does with others, which is why it came as such a shock that I adored Championship Edition DX so much. I consider Pac-Man Championship Edition DX to be pretty much the perfect video game. It contains a plethora of game modes, fantastic level design, and superb game mechanics that had me hooked on it for most of the last generation. Championship Edition 2, however, attempts to fix something that wasn't broken, and whilst I do admire the bravery of those involved in their attempt not to sit in their laurels and make something different, it just doesn't feel as good to play as the original does. A major reason for this is due to the changes that have been made to the behaviours of ghost trains. For those unfamiliar, a key strategy of Championship Edition DX is to attempt to get the attention of ghosts, who then proceed to follow Pac-Man in a train-like formation. Once a power pellet appears on the board, the player can then gobble up all the ghosts in order to dramatically increase their score. In Championship Edition 2, sleeping ghosts still follow the player in a similar fashion to DX, but once the player eats a power pellet, things play out a little differently. Instead of remaining behind the player waiting to be devoured, ghost trains now sprint around the maze in a seemingly random fashion, leaving it up to the player to chase them down and to eat them as quickly as possible. I'm not a fan of this gameplay tweak for a few reasons. Firstly, ghost trains can only be eaten from the front, which can be particularly frustrating when the player narrowly misses the first ghost, only to then see Pac-Man pathetically bounce off the train. Secondly, ghost trains are capable of moving at a ridiculous speed, making it in some cases extremely hard to accurately predict their movements. In fact, on the occasions when I have managed to successfully eat ghost train after ghost train, it often felt like luck played a huge part in this. The final reason I'm not a fan of this new mechanic is due to the fact that failure to eat the ghost trains quickly enough can completely destroy an individual playthrough. It's extremely annoying that an entire run can be ruined due to spending 10 to 20 seconds too long trying to catch up with a ridiculously OP ghost train, again making it feel like there is too much luck involved in the overall gameplay. And I say this as someone who likes to regard themselves as pretty good at the game. Not to blow my own trumpet, but I have previously been top of the leaderboards, and my current highest leaderboard position at time of recording is third place. But I still feel that even when I achieved my highest scoring run, I still owed a lot to being fortunate enough in the placing and behaviour of the ghost trains. Of course, it can be argued that DX's gameplay also contains an element of luck, in regards to the movement patterns of the active ghosts on the board, but I believe it is a minuscule amount when compared to the ghost trains in Championship Edition 2. Another key change to the game mechanics when compared to the previous entry is the fact that if Pac-Man comes into contact with a ghost, it no longer results in his death. Instead, ghosts have to be aggro by repeatedly bashing them two or three times before they start to give chase. Personally, I don't really mind this inclusion. Championship Edition 2 plays at a lot faster pace than its predecessors, so it makes sense not to have Pac-Man die on contact, although this may annoy old school Pac fans. Half boards are no longer a thing, so once the player collects a fruit they are taken straight to the next maze. In addition, bombs are now used to transport Pac-Man to the spawn point of said fruit, allowing the player to quickly progress to the next maze as well as escape tricky situations. Extra lives now appear on the game board after every 1 million points that the player achieves, and it may sound like I'm about to be very pedantic, but this decision completely infuriates me. In DX, extra lives are automatically added to the player's stock after every half a million points, meaning that gameplay is not interrupted at all. Whereas in Championship Edition 2, it is a completely different matter. See, not only does the player have to go out of their way in order to collect the 1-up, depending on their current score, they also risk the extra life not even appearing on the board at all. 
Now, I know it sounds strange, but allow me to explain. Let's just say that the player has a score that is just below a million. The player then proceeds to collect a piece of fruit that will take them to the next maze. The points for collecting said fruit is added to the player's score, causing it to rise to over a million, in which case a 1-up should appear, right? Well, yes, it should. But for some reason, when this course of action takes place, it doesn't appear at all. You'd be forgiven for thinking, so what? Does it really matter? Well, the answer is yes. Yes, it does. Because after the end of a play session, the player receives an extra 100,000 points for every life that they have. This can potentially be the difference from achieving a high score or not. I cannot believe that this was an intentional game design choice. And if it is a bug, I'm shocked that no one in QA picked it up during testing. Aside from the actual gameplay, when it comes to game modes, Championship Edition 2 is sorely lacking. The only two modes to be found are Score Attack and Adventure Mode. This is a shame, as one of my favourite modes in DX, Time Trial, has been dropped completely. Score Attack will be where players will spend most of their playtime, and whilst as I mentioned I do have some problems with the basic gameplay mechanics, this mode remains extremely addicting and enjoyable to play. Adventure Mode, on the other hand, is a bit of a letdown. The player is tasked with travelling through six worlds, overcoming various challenges along the way. Unfortunately, the majority of these challenges are all generic, uninspired and similar to one another, with a large amount of levels simply consisting of either asking the player to collect X amount of fruit, or collect X amount of power pellets before a timer runs out. It's also worth noting that up until the final world, I found all the missions to be extremely easy. The final world is by far the best part of Adventure Mode. The levels are more creative, with some requiring the player to attain a certain score within a time limit. And when compared to the rest of Adventure Mode, it's extremely tough. Truth be told, I wish the rest of the worlds were as challenging and as interesting as the final one, because as it stands, only one sixth of Adventure Mode is really worth playing. In summary, Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 is a bit of a disappointment. The tweaks to the game mechanics change things for the worse, and the poor Adventure Mode isn't a good enough substitute for some of the missing game modes from previous installments. However, I do admire Bandai Namco for trying something different and taking a risk or two with this sequel. It's just a shame that many of the risks they have taken haven't turned out to be worthwhile. Yet, in spite of all the game's problems, I'm still finding myself going back to the score attack mode in order to try and beat mine and others' high scores. Although Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 may not be anywhere near the calibre of the first Championship Edition or DX, it's still a fun, albeit rather flawed, experience. As always, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you all soon. Till next time, goodbye.